you know, transformers needed just about every application. You go to Chipotle and there's a transformer box outside. You go to, you know, uh, bowling, you need a transformer uh, outside. So new factories coming online for U.S. made uh, modules, they need they need transformers to, to turn them on. Yeah. What, what was something that early on stood out to you as a like, aha, I had no idea, despite all my years in the industry, that this is how this thing works? A lot of owners and developers, you know, I had the opportunity to ask them, hey, what's your biggest pain point on projects? Mm, and yeah. the, almost instantaneously, all of them were, were uh, the same answer of, hey, transformers are my biggest problem. Connections into transformers are my biggest problem. Okay. Uh, so and so it's not just the lead time; it's the actual like the technical, quality. it's a technical solution. Yeah, and, and then you've got um, you know folks just not picking up the phone mm. uh, from a warranty customer care standpoint. Okay, so, after the fact. Yeah. So um, you know, I had the opportunity to work with a lot of uh, incredible people at Shoals, mm. highly capable team. We stood up a customer care team uh, there. We're going to do the same thing here at MGM and, yeah. and really take care of our customers. Fantastic. A thing that stands out to me for a company that has five decades of experience in uh, in building transformers is actually the tenure and loyalty of the existing team at MGM. What can you tell me about that? Uh, that was one of the things that I saw when I toured the facility. Is yeah. um, you know we've got winders in um, in the factory that have been there for over forty years. No way. Um, so you know you you walk down the hallway, you meet these people. There's folks with nine years, ten years, nineteen years, twenty something Amazing. years, forty something. It, it's just what you, incredible. What do you get for working forty years at MGM? <laughs> uh, a there, great place to work. A great place yeah. to work. A good work, uh, good culture. Yeah, I mean. So you mentioned Winder. What is that? What kind of job is that? You know, well, so these transformers are very very specialized, and it's it requires a lot of highly skilled labor to assemble mm-hmm. these. So. You know, one of the bigger bottlenecks and, again, the, the challenge that the industry has seen is that transformer availability, you know, hasn't uh, caught up with the demand. And that's because, you know, folks that are winding these, uh, these cores are, um, you know, it, it takes them a long time. They're to, doing it by hand. Yeah. So um, it takes them a long time to, to be trained and, and do it right. One pinhole uh, in a transformer could, could blow the whole thing up if it's not done right. Where would a pinhole be? I don't understand. And the Nomex and, and the and the wire. Yeah, I'm. I have no idea how transform, transformers work. It, does it does it surprise you how many of your friends in the industry just are clueless about how transformers work? Um, no, I think everybody is. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a it's a it's a, um, a a component that has no mechanical parts. It yeah. doesn't move. It's so, kind of a ghost component. Yeah, there's yeah. no there's no real failure yeah. modes of transformers other than you know what I just mentioned, but. You know, it doesn't move. It's static. You know, it's it's a pretty elegant design that we've been using for hundreds, you know, hundred yeah. years. So, can I ask you for some like just help me with some technical jargon? Wet versus dry. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, dry transformer. We make those in in commerce. Um, you know, low voltage or medium voltage transformers, and then liquid filled is you know you have a a core that's submerged into a tank. Yeah. Um, with with either mineral oil or FR3. Yeah, and I know that you're not an electrical engineer, but what is the differentiation in terms of the application of one versus the other? Uh, it's just a different type of insul- insulating uh, uh-huh. material that's used for okay. the for the course. Yeah, and is one preferable for a specific size project? I, I would say liquid fields are used predominantly in renewables yeah. uh, in the in the solar energy storage space uh, more so than dry. Just but you know it really just depends upon the uh, the enclosure that's used, the NEMA rating of the enclosure. So yeah. we want to make sure we keep things like dust out um, so it doesn't affect the, the the windings. Of course. So it's it's fascinating to me that transformers, as you said, they're ubiquitous and they support the entire electrification space. It's not just individual projects. Are we seeing more? capacity come online to support the growth of electrification. Notably, as you pointed out, the transformer is not something that's isolated as a bottleneck to just the solar industry. How do we remove that bottleneck? I mean, it's really reinvesting into the business. And that's uh, something that uh, MGM's been committed to doing over the last uh, year is uh, reinvesting into the business, growing capacity and uh, removing the bottleneck of just that supply constraint that uh, is is affecting projects. Yeah, is there? A, help me understand why the technology still exists today as it did almost the same as it did fifty years ago. Uh, it goes back to what I said earlier: is that 
the design is already elegant. There's, yeah. It hasn't really changed because it doesn't need to. Um, you know, there's um, there's no moving parts, no failure modes, as I mentioned earlier. And so, you know, if it's if it's not broke, don't fix it. Right. Uh, there's a lot of things that are going on beyond behind the scenes that you know maybe folks don't see. Mm. Um, efficiencies have gotten better over time. Yeah, you know, we have a, a highly skilled uh, and quite large um, uh, engineering team, a, a team of twenty led by our uh, yeah. our yeah. very own Dr. David. Uh, Walker, he's the man, um, <laughs> but uh, he's been making Transformers for over 40 years. Wow. Um, and so we're very fortunate to have uh, Dr. David on our team, and uh, he's a tremendous resource for us. How long does a Transformer last? <laughs> uh, I would say at least, you know, 30 years, but 30. empirically, yeah. it's a little bit longer than that. Got it. So at least match the, the asset life of what yep. we are currently warranting solar farms yep. are, for sure. What's next for MGM then? Um, you know, we've been, uh, very fortunate to be accepted almost in- instantly. We've, we've been kind of the wizard of Oz behind the curtain for a long time, yeah. um, uh, supporting, uh, many companies, but, uh, I think, uh, just reinvesting into the, into the manufacturing, uh, bringing Waco online, uh, next year is gonna be fantastic for us. And we're just going to continue to, to grow our capacity and support customers and, and really take care of them. That's at the end of the day, that's what we need to do. Well, it's one of those conversations that uh, has become, I feel like over the last year, been a lot more prevalent. I had uh, Dan Girard on the podcast recently, and he talked about the real need for uh, working with better transformer companies. I know that you guys have a long history with Dan and yeah. his, uh, his team and the EPC and all the way back to his S&C days. So it's good to see good teams coalescing around the hard problems, the ones that we really need to accelerate. Ben Macias is the Chief Revenue Officer now at MGM Transformer, building a dream team to help resolve the problems at the real bottleneck of our utility-scale transformation of this grid. Thank you, Ben, for everything you're doing. Thanks for having me.